So today we're going to be doing the UD, uh, ideal gas law lab. And in doing this, we're going to be using a UDometer. The only things you're going to need to obtain from me in this lab is what you see right here. You're going to need the UDometer, which what makes a UDometer different from a gas collection tube is you will see there's little metal electrodes in the end of it, although these have been kind of flattened out up in there. Somebody must have jammed something up in this thing. But anyway, and that's actually made to arc and actually cause a reaction in the gas. So that's kind of neat. But anyway, you're going to need a copper cage, which is nothing more than... A bunch of coiled up copper. A bunch of coiled up copper wire, and you're going to need a stopper like that one. So that's the only thing you're going to need from me. Uh, other things I'm going to need to go get, I need to get a, go get a ring stand. Lane, could you get me a ring stand? So, Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, other things you're going to need, you're going to need a burette clamp. Looks like this. Uh, please, when you get done the lab, put the ring stand back together. I'm going to put the burette or the burette clamp up here. Now I know I'm not using a burette in this lab, but I could if I wanted to. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna twist it so that I got some room off to the side here. I'm gonna get a 250 milliliter beaker. Again, 250 milliliter. I'm gonna set that underneath that. And I'm really actually this is all I need to do to get ready to do this lab. And what we're gonna do first is just practice the lab. So I'm gonna get some water. I'm gonna get about 300 milliliters of water to practice. And the reason why I'm going to practice with 300 milliliters is when I do the lab, I'm only going to have 300 milliliters of acid to do this lab. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and pour about 200 milliliters of water into this beaker. Actually, I'm going to do a little short of 200. That's close to 175. And now I'm going to take the rest of this water, and I'm going to fill up this udiometer. No, 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 pour a little over my hand. You could use a funnel if you wanted to. But hey, it needs funnels, and you got oh, mad skills. All right, so now this is going to be all you do in the lab for real. All you're going to do is take the copper cage. Do make sure that the copper cage will go down inside of the tube. Slide the copper cage down inside. Take the rubber stopper. Don't jam it down in there. Just put it down in there. Now I'm going to invert the tube into the water. And I'm going to roll it over. And if you got two people, it does come in handy, but I got it. I'm going to take, the, I like to take the copper cage and just kind of coil the wire over the side. It actually helps hold this thing in place while you're doing this, especially if it's one person. And the whole goal of the lab is for me to be able to take this in, put it under the water. You can see the copper cage in it. And to not get any air bubbles in the top of it. And that's the big thing right now. If you look, there should be no air bubbles. Now I'm going to grab one more thing out of my drawer. I'm going to grab a little spatula out. And I'm going to come over here. I need to get that stopper out. By the way, be careful. This is actually important. If you put the UD on your too far down in here, you can't get the stopper out. And if you raise the UDometer up too far, you'll get it out of the water, and then the air floods back up in. So I'm just going to take this and try and do a little coercion and knock that stopper out. And beep, there goes the stopper. Done with it. Now in the real lab, we'll have acid on this. You'll need to probably wash your fingers off. But that's all you're going to do in the lab. I mean, this is it for the lab. So what I want you to do is I want you to practice this two or three times till you make sure you can get no air bubbles in here and you don't get your hands covered in acid is going to be the goal. But this is all you're going to do in the lab. Now are you ready to do it for real? When you get ready to do this for real, I'm going to need, I'm going to actually need 270 milliliters of water. But uh, Lane, could you, grab me, could you grab me 300 milliliters of distilled water? 300 milliliters of distilled water. That would be great. I need to go ahead and get this taken care of. Oh, thank you very much. So I've got my 300 milliliters of distilled water. Uh, get this. Really before you do the lab, you ought to go ahead and rinse this tube out with some distilled water a little bit and get it good and clean. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get all that out. So I've got some water here. Uh, I'm going to need a, see if i got a, yeah. I'm going to need a 500 milliliter, 600 milliliter beaker to mix everything in. Uh, I'm going to need to do this. All right, now, to make your acid, to make the acid, you need 270 milliliters of distilled water to make your acid. So I've got a 100 milliliter graduate cylinder here because I'm a little lazy. I don't want to do it so many times, so I'm going to go for 100. Bam. So there's 100 milliliters. Here comes... Uh, 
this is exciting video watching somebody pour liquid. There's 200 milliliters and how much distilled water do I say I need? 270. 270. So now I'm going to get 200 and... And I should really be pipetting this, but hey, I'm a professional. I played high school football, you know. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Would you look at that? Pipette. Pipettes are for children. Come on. There's 270 milliliters of distilled water. Now, at some point, guess what I probably need to put in that? I need to put some acid in it. Come along. We'll go over here. So how much acid are we going to put in it? Any guesses? 270 milliliters of water. Here, we'll do it right. Under the hood, 30 milliliters of acid. So we're going to come over. Always hold by the label. And I'm going to attempt to pour in, pour a little bit all over. Wow, this is terrible for a video. And it looks like I need just... Bam! 30 milliliters. Now, this is 30 milliliters of one molar acid, so it's already pretty weak. So now I'm going to come back over here. And I'm going to take the 30 milliliters and I'm just going to pour that in the here. So now this is no longer water we're dealing with. That's now what? That is an acid solution. But it's only a 0.1 molar solution. I'm going to grab this glass rod out. Give it a little stir. So when I do this lab for real, now I'm going to be using that acid to do the lab. So I've got my acid mixed up. It's ready to go. The only other thing I'm missing right now is magnesium. Let's go over here to the balance. Uh, zero. Now, this is going to be kind of important. I don't want but like 0.01 to 0.02 something grams of magnesium. If you use a piece of magnesium, and look at how little this is. That may be too big right there. If you use over 0 0.03, you'll fill up the udiometer and we won't be able to measure it. The udiometer only reads to 50 mils. And 0 0.03 grams, in theory, should make 60 milliliters of hydrogen. So let's lay that little piece on there. See what we got. Shut the lid. How are we coming out there? 0 0.018. So is that any problems using that piece? No. That problem piece will be fine. So we got 0 0.018 grams of magnesium. I should probably write that down. Now what I'm going to do with a piece of magnesium is this. I'm going to open up the cage. And I'm going to try and get this into the cage somehow, if I can. I'm actually making a mess of my cage. Look at what I've done. Jeez. But I want to try and get it trapped in the cage, even if you have to fold it. Now, be careful if you fold it. You might break it in two. But the goal is going to be, any second now, I will do this. There it is. I want to get this thing so that it is trapped inside the cage. I'm going to be honest. In theory, what you ought to do is weigh the cage, set the cage on there and zero it put it in and then probably set it back on the cage so you know how much magnesium actually made it in the cage in case any breaks off. I also want to do something else. I've got the magnesium in the cage. While this is still empty, I want to make sure it fits in here. Okay, so it does fit in here, so I'm good there. Y'all, now I'm ready to do this lab for real. So I'm going to do just like I did before. How much water am I going to put in there again? Oh, excuse me. Now it's not water. Now it's going to be what? How much am I going to put in here? A little under 200. So I'm going to go about 175. Now I'm going to be a little more careful this time because this is acid. So I'm going to try not to pour it on my hand. I'm going to grab a funnel even. you got to be careful the funnel though. You'll actually overshoot this thing in a hurry. I'm actually better off not using the funnel. I'll probably overfill it for sure. Oh, uh, I ain't gonna take a chance. By the way, this would probably be a good time to break out a pipette and finish filling this up. 
as opposed to my technique of complete reckless abandon. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. Now, here's the only difference. When you were practicing, you didn't have to be very fast. But the reality, this is acid, this is magnesium. The second I put this in here, it's going to start making hydrogen gas. So it's going to start bubbling. So I've got to quickly get this in there, get the copper stopper in, flip this, get the stopper out before it blows the stopper out because of the pressure. So this time it's going to have to be fast. Ready. This is probably where this is where two people will be good because I got to get this in and then put the stopper in. And in it goes. Stopper flipped over. Bam. Hooked it. Oh, I'm on fire right now. Like a boss. I about got in there a little too deep, so I'm going to pull it up just a little, but not out. And now, get the stopper out. Get the stopper out, which is now covered in acid. And now, I don't know if the camera will show this. Now, if I had y'all using stronger acid, this would be a much faster. Get down here a little closer, though. See if it's on the camera. Can you see little bubbles starting to rise? We can, but we're in real life, and you're I on yeah, a say so. computer. Yeah, bubbles are starting to rise. Here in a little bit, it's going to become much more vigorous. Here within a few minutes, it's going to start bubbling like crazy. And it's going to bubble and bubble and bubble. Now, like right now, I'm already getting a few little bubbles at the very top. That's fine. What we don't want to do this, though, is do this and have a big wad of air up here because then we won't know what we measured out in gas. Now, I'm going to be honest. Now, this is the thing. When you get done with this part, all the acid's pretty weak. Just wash everything off really good and dry it before you put it back in your drawers. Clean everything else up, and all you're going to do is leave this sitting here till tomorrow. Uh, and then what you're going to do is come back in on the next day. And when you come back in, all I need you to do is just come in and read the volume on here. And that's it. And when you're done, every bit of this, it's really, really weak acid solution. It's only 0.1 molar because I know y'all are probably going to get some in your fingers. If you got a cut or something, it might sting a little, but that's going to be it. So I did this intentionally for safety reasons. Pour everything down the sink and just run a bunch of water through everything to clean it up really good at that point. We're not going to do baking soda or anything crazy. It's only 0.1 molar acid. But there you go. That's what we should have when we come. And if we do leave this here, eventually we'll come back and it will be full of gas at the top. Hydrogen gas, explosively. Alright, does anybody have a question? In that case,